Yo, I'm Will Blackman, and this is Upsets and Underdogs, presented by WinBet. Week 14 was a little unusual. There was only one upset as the Falcons beat the Panthers. Uh, all the other favorites won. Uh, we'll discuss that game, and we'll also dig into a big upset from UFC 269. Then we have a fun segment that looks ahead to the Super Bowl. So let's get into it. This show is brought to you by WinBet. Week 14 is in the books, and there's still plenty of time to get in on the action. So right now, download the WinBet app right now and start winning today. WinBet offers unique markets like NFL yardage leaders, team exact win totals, and a ton more. Plus, New users can take advantage of WinBet's bet $1, win $100 offer. If you bet just $1, you can win a free $100 bet on almost any sport. NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB, college football, UFC, boxing, and more. And they're also offering a 200% wager matchup up to $1,500. For all the details on these offers, download the WinBet app now and set the odds in your favor. Offer so that you change. Terms and conditions at winbet.com must be 21 or older and present in the state where WinBet is available to you. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. And like we always start off the show, I like to bring in my guy, Lamb, Nick Dias. What is the deal? How you doing? How you feeling? Are you recovered? Yeah, I'm good. Well, I'm good. You know, it's uh, this is, I believe, the second or third time that we start a show. And I'm angry at myself for not listening to myself. And the reason why I say that is last week, you asked me a bet that I liked on the WinBet app. I said, Charles (laughs) Oliveira, the underdog. We get the GOAT GSP on, which, by the way, golf clap for you, sir. Once again, pulling that one off. He tells us, we tell him about Charles Oliveira. We're both on Charles Oliveira. On my show, I say Charles Oliveira. Do you see where this is going? I end <laughs> yes. up betting Dustin Poirier. And Did you it really? Been, yeah, man. Terrible, Will. Terrible. But besides that, it was a good weekend. Fun weekend. <laughs> got to hang out with a lot of buddies after being away. So it was cool. How about you? I saw you got your golf on. Yeah, I um, Allie LaFour, she had a golf tournament uh hope uh cured hope and um yeah it was cool I actually got to hang out with charles barkley and then uh, he and i exchanged info he's big into the spirits and wine game so that was super fun i uh, got to golf here at pelican hill so that was a good time and then um yeah my wife and i we went to nap before a day which was exciting uh um, robert mondavi's getting into the nft game so that was yeah that was super interesting um Gary V obviously is involved with this project, but Jeff Coons. So it was it was an interesting situation, but no more wine, no more Napa, no more Vegas. Let's talk. Actually, yeah, Vegas is involved. Let's talk about uh, um, watching the game last night. You, you always hear well, I always hear Dan Orlovsky talk about how Matt LaFleur is, is definitely coach of the year. Ken. He's probably top two, top three coaches in the NFL. And I will say that's very, very fair simply because there is no slowing down when there's changes or adjustments um like especially if someone gets banged up on the offensive line it's either they have a lot of depth or they have really good coaching you know and it's probably a combination of both i mean if you have good depth you probably have good coaching um so i would definitely say like coach of the year candidate he's he's there for sure obviously kingsbury is there because of all the adversity they dealt with during the season and then you know i will i will give a lot of credit also to Mike Vabril. I think, um, especially where Tennessee is sitting, uh, they are eight and they're nine and four right now, uh, and losing, you know, arguably the best offensive player, uh, one of them in Derrick Henry and also AJ Brown, like dealing with a lot of stuff. They're still nine and four. They're like a weird looking nine and four. Like you wouldn't know that, but they've been winning games. But my favorite. And simply because just the way he bounced back in one year is Bill Belichick, man. I just, it's just, um, I think it's super. He went in the, he, he's probably going to get not just coach of the year, but also executive of the year because of what he did. And I, I knew, I was like, man, he's going to, he could have won coach of the year last year because they were seven to nine. I don't think anyone else takes that team seven to nine. So I like those three. Is, is there a name you want to throw in that hat? Well, Fun little dynamic that went down early this morning. Belichick and Kingsbury sort of one-upping each other. Kingsbury said it should be Belichick. Belichick said it should be Kingsbury. And I think the names that you mentioned, Will, would be the ones that I would give it to. 
uh, to start the year was pretty much Brandon Staley. He was the talk of the town. For kind sure. of fizzled out a little bit. Rough spots there for the Chargers in the middle of the year. But it's hard to argue, in my opinion, against Cliff Kingsbury. They're 10 and 2. We're recording this prior to the Monday Night Football game against the Rams. They are home. They're the favorite. However, they lose Kyler Murray for three games. And you've been on teams. The morale of the team and the locker room when they lose their starting quarterback is damn. Right. What's going to happen now? Because of right. how important the quarterback is, we all know this. And especially Kyler Murray, who I've gone on record many, many times saying that I think he might be the most difficult quarterback to prepare for in the NFL as far as the run, the throw right. on the run, the passing, and then you factor in all these weapons that he has at his disposal too. Yep. So the fact that they went 2-1 and one without him, they're 10-2 and two right now, top seed in the NFC. For me, Will, I think it's Cliff Kingsbury, especially when you factor in what the expectations were last year. A darling pick to make the playoffs. They didn't. They bounced back this year with a winning record like this. Uh, I'm on Kingsbury. No, and that's fair because right when Kyler, when Kyler went down, Colt came in and he went to San Fran and won. You know, then they had that weird game with Carolina, and then when Cam came back, and then he goes to Seattle and throws for 300 yards. I'm talking about Colt McCoy here, okay? Yeah. Um, which is you know he played like he did when he was at Texas. And also, how good has that Niners win by the Cardinals look now with the Niners being a team that's won five of the last six? Right. So and I that think, was at um, the time of when, you know, they started to get hot kind of. Right. So that again, they're they're a quiet 10 and 2. And I say quiet because it's just like, you know, you, you, you don't realize it until you keep checking it because everyone else is a big storylines. All right. The record books. Uh, let's catch up with the record books real quick. So my picks this week um i had washington and vegas covering i didn't have the win i had them covering and they both got actually you know what washington was close they both get mopped washington did not cover raiders they they went to the they went to the logo pregame and I, I don't know what they were doing and they got they got blasted dude i, I don't know i personally think that's hilarious like at least, at least have the game like come down to like a a field goal or something. They got absolutely wiped off the logo and sent back to Vegas immediately. And then, um, yeah, Seattle. I said that game wasn't going to be close, and it wasn't. So I went one and two. My underdog of the week to win outright was Jacksonville. That was just me being, you know, a former Jaguar, wishful thinking. Um, that <laughs> there wasn't a chance. That one did not pan out. Um, I am five and eight on my underdogs of the week so far this season. Uh, my favorite pick to cover was Washington. They did not. So I'm seven and six on my favorite picks of the season so far. Uh, my overall record is 21 and 24. Nick, I seem to not be able to escape you. Uh, yeah, you're just saying way too close to me in these <laughs> rankings, Will. And I know we're podcast best friends, but come on now. We got to we gotta separate ourselves from this. I'm also 21 and 24. Seven and six are my underdogs. I had the Jets after they blew up my parlay last week. Like a moron, I went back to the Jets and I lost. And boy, oh boy, favorite plays of the week. <laughs> Yikes. Had the Bengals. Three and ten on the year, but that was if a good are, call, man. That was such a weird game, dude. I didn't such think they wouldn't get game. like thrown out the gate like that, but sure enough, came back towards the end and almost got it done. You know, I wanted him to miss the PAT there when they made it twenty to nineteen. I'm like, because I it was plus two, so I'm like, oh, if he misses this one, we get the cover at least. You know, that was the gambler talking to me. But well, I want to mention one thing, man. Monster, monster week by the favorites, <laughs> right? I mean. 11 and 2 against the spread. Anytime, Will, the favorites are dominating like this, it's not a good time for the sports books because Bob at the bar, when you walk up to him, Will, and you're like, hey, man, what do you like today? He's probably going to give you chalk plays. He'll be like, yeah, I think Chiefs are going to cover. I think Seahawks are going to cover. Anytime Bob at the bar is right, you know the sports books <laughs> are going to be struggling. 12 and 1 straight up also were the favorites too. We only had one underdog. And you mentioned something about Washington. And if you guys are watching this video, I started grabbing my face. Dude, they missed the PAT. They would have gave us the cover. 
It was six and a half. He misses the PAT. Will, this year, we are on track for the most point after attempts missed in the NFL. There's been the change from a couple years ago where they backed it up. Now it's essentially a 33-yard field goal attempt. Only five teams have not missed the PAT this year. The Bills, the Eagles, Falcons, Ravens, and Giants. Shout out to the Giants. They're doing something right. <laughs> However, the rest of the league, Will, has missed a minimum of two PATs and in some cases, more than five missed point attempts. Will, as a former player, the kicker is a very polarizing position on the team. What goes through your mind when a kicker can't hit a field goal of that magnitude? It means they need to um, they need to stay out and watch the entire practice. Kickers they come out for special they come out pre practice they kick they do all their special team stuff and when they're done with specialists they get to go inside the building and hang out. They need to stay out and watch the whole practice. They need to get in better condition. That's what they need to do. They need to be challenged. They need some kind of competitive thing. When Mason Crosby won his kicking job, this was 2007, I think, we legit had a kicking battle in training camp. Like He won that job in training camp. It was This is when we still had double days. It was a night session uh, on the grass field, and McCarthy just straight up had a kicking competition. And I remember when Mason was kicking, we didn't really know him. So everybody was like squirting him with water bottles and throwing stuff at him. And <laughs> boom, he would just like drill it right through the uprights. Every time we try to get on his nerves, the D linemen, they were the worst. And they would harass Mason. Boom. So we need to like do something. Keep it competitive. Maybe they need to play like kick, you know, like the horse version. Um, something. Don't go inside and play ping pong, kickers. Like stay outside and do something. I don't know. That's the deal. But anyhow, <laughs> I will say, though, the favorite the you mentioned the favorites winning this weekend. I will say because it is it is crunch time. It is like the, the best teams are clearly separating themselves right. in this situation. You look at the top teams in East Division. Let's go. Let's go to the um, the East, right? AFC East, the Patriots and Bills. That's who we expected to be on top. And sure, if they are, you go to the AFC West. You got the Chiefs and the Chargers. That's who we expected to be on top. You go to the AFC North, the Ravens and the Browns. That's kind of who we expected to be on top. AFC South, Titans and Colts. Boom, right there. You know. And then let's go to the NFC: Cowboys and Washington. Those are the two teams we mm-hmm. thought you, you had the Cardinals and Rams. Boom. Two teams we thought, Packers, Vikings, and then, you know, you go to the south, you got the Bucks, And then obviously right now, it was, which is weird that the Falcons are six and seven. Dude, you were talking about it before <laughs> with the Titans about weird records. I was gathering my notes for this. And as I'm looking at the standings, I'm like, how in the world are the Falcons six and seven? Because all I've heard from Atlanta fans and Falcons beat reporters is negativity. Right. I, right. I fully expected them to be like three and ten right now. My buddy Alan, who I do my show with, Will, is a huge Falcons fan, covers them. And I text him after I saw this. I'm like, yo, you guys are six and seven. He's like, Yeah, it's I feel the same way you do. And <laughs> the same weird. way you just express yourself. It is super weird. Um, so I think that's what's going on. It's crunch time, you know, towards the end of the season. So that's what's locking it. All right, let's get into our upset breakdown. This is where usually uh we highlight a few big upsets. But this week like we mentioned, there's only one to talk about in the NFL, but we do have another in the fight game. So, perfect segue. Falcons 29-21 over the Panthers. This is at the end of our last episode. I was like, hey, there's some potential upsets that could happen. Uh, this was on my list. I had a conversation with uh, Matt Ryan earlier, this like mid-season. This is actually after they, they played in London. And, and it's funny, we had a conversation because he hit me up. He was like, hey, you do you have Taylor Soleil's number? Taylor Soleil is, is one of our former teammates at Boston College, and he's now the star uh, actor on that show, Queens, on ABC. Um, he's the, he's, it's, it's, it's weird because he's my best friend. We were teammates. He's our kid's godfather. And he said, I didn't know he was on that show. So I gave him his number. We started talking about the season. And he's like, yeah, it's tough. You know, we're, we're struggling right now. You know, it's, it's hard in this situation. I said, yeah, but your guys are, are still playing hard. You're competing. He was like, mm-hmm. that is true. We are, we are battling every single week. And um, I think it's kind of 
like you said, because it's Atlanta and and they having weird wins, I think it's going like unnoticed. The fact that they're, they're six and seven, which is like is pretty damn good in this situation. You know, like you said, nine and eight is a potential playoff berth. You know, uh, in this especially in the NFC. Yep. Uh, because it's it's still kind of wide open. So yeah, like I said, despite them being six and seven, they're, they're playing really well. Um, I am talking about the Panthers, dude. I, I think. <laughs> I don't know, man. I feel like the I feel like the people who are who are emotionally invested in Cam, they need to start like seeing the facts. You know what I'm saying? And sure, like he in terms of like him athletically, how gifted he is and, and the things he can do or was able to do, he's just not the same anymore. And I think the people who are emotionally invested in Cam kind of need to come to that. It's kind of like how, you know, when you know, when people who, who when you love your favorite player and they're just not the same anymore. You know, it's it's kind of like I remember watching like Roy Jones and and what he did in boxing, and all of a sudden he started getting hit and like knocked out. I'm like, damn, dude. Okay, okay, he still got it. He still got it. You know, or Pacquiao just finished. And I love Pacquiao is probably my favorite boxer. And he, the way he lost to Ugas at the end, like, I mean, absolutely wiped off. And I'm thinking like, oh, I know he's like in his 40s, but maybe he can do this. You know, Cam's body got beat up, beat up bad, you know, the past whatever, four years, ever, ever since he's, he's won, he went and won the MVP in 15. And Love Cam's energy, who he is as a person, how excited he is, his how he inspires people, all this stuff. But let's we need to keep talking about football. And when it comes to football, right now, I, I think I think you know the end is is kind of near for Cam just because uh it's it's been just watching it on film, man. It's been tough the past like three or four years to to watch and it is what it is man like it's just not the same and i think that's it's tough and then you you look at what's going on with the panthers upstairs too at matt rule i mean he can't figure out the quarterback situation he fires joe brady uh, his oc and they're just they're just simply struggling man um so yeah man and then of course probably i don't know if there's an award for Cordell Patterson, other than Pro Bowl, what like what do we give him? Like, is there a most improved player in the NFL? We gotta give him something. Or he's just on the list for offensive player of the year. I mean, he's been he's been absolutely outstanding for what he has done. So I don't know, man. What, what how are you feeling about the uh these two teams? Well, I love what you said about Cam, and it, it seems like one of the more difficult things as a sports fan, Will, I'll talk as a sports fan, is what you said about the guy that you rooted for when you don't want to admit he don't got it no more. And it sucks because Cam has shown his flashes still. So that's what right. probably brings people back in, right? He throws a deep bomb to DJ Moore a couple weeks ago, scores on the ground, does a celebration, gives the kid the football on the road. So he still shows his flashes. But, you know, when he entered the league, Will, up until his MVP season, he scored a lot of touchdowns at the goal line right. and a lot of times just at the goal line clanging and banging. That's probably where most of the big hits happen because people are diving to the goal line to either prevent a touchdown or score one. And his body was a weapon. Eventually, your body starts to break down. And that's what I think we're seeing with Cam. And he's a very polarizing player because I always harp on when he was winning MVP and they went 15-1 and one that year. He's wearing all those hats and those funky, cool outfits. Everybody loved Cam. Then the next year, they start losing. The year after that, they start losing. Nothing changed with Cam's appearance and his hat collection. And like you said, he owns a hat collection like company and all these outfits that he's doing. But now you're losing, so you're being slandered for that, right? It's a huge double standard in the sports world. But ultimately, it's what you said, Will. I think... It, there comes a point in guys' career where they're just not what they used to be. And coaching the aging star is something Phil Jackson once said is the most difficult thing a head coach and a fan can root for. Right. So, um, yeah. So then in terms of gambling takeaways, the uh, takeaways, the 
pretty much evenly distributed, right? Money and ticket counts on yeah, both sides. Basically, like, a, like you could have picked either one. And yeah, and, and what that was telling me is that no one really knew what side to lean on heavily. Um, there was a slight edge to the Panthers because they were at home. But again, you keep a good point that you brought up many times is how much of a home field advantage is there now with the players just wanting to play in front of someone. But it's basically was just a coin flip, well, like you mentioned. So that's it. That's our only underdog this week uh, in, in week 14, man. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, what else do you want? The, the, the favorites end up winning. Vegas is not happy. And those who bet the favorites, you guys made money this week. Joe at the bar. This show is brought to you by WinBet. We've wrapped up week 14 of the NFL season. So what are you waiting for? Download the WinBet app and start winning today. Plus, new users can take advantage of WinBet's bet $1 Win $100 offer. If you bet just $1, you can win a free $100 bet on almost any sport. NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB, college football, UFC, boxing, and more. And they're also offering a 200% wager matchup up to $1,500. And like I like to ask you every week, Nick, Lamb, what are you liking on the win bet app this week? Give us something good, too. Don't, like, give us some, like... Yeah, all stuff, right. Man. So so here's the uh, thing, right? Have you been following this Steph Curry stuff, how he's on pace to break the all-time record for threes? He needs yeah. about eight threes to do so. So because I'm a Knicks fan and because I've been scarred my whole life, every time players come into MSG, they have career games. I know that the Warriors play on Monday night, but on Tuesday, they play at MSG, Will. And I'm looking at the player props over on Steph Curry. I think Curry goes absolutely nuclear. Maybe a 50 ball in MSG. Breaks the all-time record. Because it's MSG. That's why. It's MSG, man. You know, every guy comes into the guarded will and lights it up. Intentionally. That's disrespectful that teams do that. Like, they can't wait. I think Jordan started doing that, right? Like, he'll go in there and just try to blast people. Yeah, and he started the trend of, oh, it's my favorite arena to play in, yet no superstar ever comes play at MSG because, you know, the life of a Knicks fan. But I'm looking at the Warriors to take care of business in their next two games. You get minus three against the Knicks on Tuesday at the time that this is airing. So that's something that I'm looking at. Ha, huh. I like that. Um, I, you know, I always go to soccer. I'm looking at the Tottenham game versus Liverpool. That's a pretty interesting game interesting game i'm not picking who but for all details on those offers we just mentioned earlier download one bit app now and set the odds in your favor uh offers up to change term and conditions at winbet.com must be 21 or older and present in the state winbet is available to you if you or someone you know has a gambling problem please call 1-800-522-4700 all right we are getting into our upset of the week and because i'm such a team player Nick, take it away. Let's go. I like this. <laughs> I like this curveball. Because you, I want to share your pat. I want you passionate. Okay. So yeah. please take it yeah. away with the upset of the week. Well, this might be an upset, Will, that we might be doing in the future uh, with, with this sure, narrative we might, series. We have to that do we this got. in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Juliana Pena plus 600 beat the GOAT, Amanda Nunez, on Saturday. And uh, Will, I want I want to ask you before we get into the nitty gritty, so, some news and notes about this one and the gambling takeaways. We had GSP on last week, and yes. after after we recorded, when I went back and listened to that episode, something resonated with me that he mentioned: be careful when the fighter is on the mountaintop and they seem invincible. We spent the whole segment with GSP saying, "Ah, we know Nunez is going to win. How's he going to do it?" Is it going to be a knockout? Is it going to be a submission? We completely discredited Juliana Pena. Will, is that what you think happened with Nunez? Did she take her lightly? Has her life changed so much now that it's this has become the narrative of how is she going to win? Because we know she's going to. No, I was I would say yes, because we spoke to George St. Pierre, who was speaking from experience. He's a UFC Hall of Famer. He, like he said, he got a great night of sleep before he lost to Matt Sarah. Yep. Great rest because he was comfortable. And after that, he never lost again. And he said, he said, victory and success in the fight game is what weakens you the most. Because just to, just to get into the UFC, 
you got to go through it unless you know unless dana finds you and thinks you're a hot ticket then you know you get the fast track to the ufc but that's why i i love i'm a big documentary guy and i love watching especially like sports documentaries and the, the two we mentioned before was the dustin poirier his um fightville documentary you know connor's documentary i remember on I used to love on MTV World of Jinx. Like I was a big fan of that. And Anthony Showtime Pettis, he was there. And all these dudes were fighting for like 50 bucks, hundred dollars in these like local competitions. You know, these guys are not making and their dream is to like, we're just I just want to be able to get to a certain situation where I can make some money in the UFC. And so those guys, my point is those guys are starving. They're hungry. They're like ready to go. And so it's very, very, I think once you get there and you do relax, cause like oh, finally, like my bank account is full. I can pay all these trainers. I can get all the top training. Ah, <sighs> you know, like, but that's why to be the absolute greatest, in my opinion, victory and success strengthens you to be the absolute greatest. Um, that's why it's, it's so impressive to to watch, like I said, Brady continue to do it, to see Belichick continue to do it, to see LeBron continue to do it, to see, you know, Jordan back then, or I mentioned Usain Bolt, to see these guys, Floyd Mayweather, to, to, yep. for him, because you, and being those guys, you know, every single week, the fans want you to lose, and the person you're fighting is trying to take your head off. Period. Like you know, every single week you're getting somebody's best shot. Even though, yeah, LeBron's what thirty seven, something like that. Yeah, and these young guys are like, I got a chance to go up against one of the goats. You play against Brady, who's in, in his you know early forties. I got a chance to pick off one of the goats. I got, I have a chance, and they know that, and they find a way to still. Get up and be motivated. I was on, I mentioned how I was on Colin about like Aaron Rodgers, how, you know, he has nothing to prove, but every week he finds something. Like he mentioned, hey, you know, he mentioned last night my toe was, I think I re injured it. You know, now he puts out another story. Everyone's going to worry about his toe, talk him a lot of smack about him. He probably set us up on purpose to do that. <laughs> and now, watch, well, he's going to go out there and continue to ball. These guys end up finding, you know, even Khabib. You know, they just yeah. continually find ways to just get rid of people. You know, Kobe, like that's that's what it is. So when he mentioned victory and success, especially in the fight game, is weaken somebody. It definitely does, especially in the fight game. Yeah, the fight game is hard to get paid. It's super hard to get paid. So yeah, you you need to get to that championship main event status to really start doing what you said, where you're like, all right, phew, don't need to worry about the cable bill or the trainer bills, none of that. Like everything is taken care of, and but paying that's you the why. one. But that's Pena, why. The, Go ahead. Uh, well, uh, I was going to mention about Pena. The one thing that I really liked about her was that she's been asking for this fight since UFC 200. It was something she was saying before the fight. And then in the post fight, she said, look, she's amazing. She is the goat. She has the most dominant resume, but I've wanted to fight her. And I was not a part of that resume. So until I was, I wanted to test myself against the best. And even after the first round, Will, so Amanda Nunez was a, le- uh, a minus 1,100 favorite, meaning you have to risk $1,100 to win 100 on mm-hmm. her to win the fight. That ballooned up to minus 1,600 after the first round because it seemed like when Pena first got stung by her, she realized, oh, snap, there's more power here than I expected. For sure. And then the round ends with her on top of her. And then... At the start of the second round, sort of zombie mode by Pena. She's getting pieced up, but she's bringing the fight to her. And then it looked visibly fatigued. Amanda Nunez looked shot in there. And then before you know it, clever little sweep takedown, takes the back, chokes her out. Will, 20. Dude, she didn't even get the hooks in and choked her out. Yeah, that was just a, you know, I I, I do jujitsu. And like, there's some times where I tap after like a 12 minute roll because I'm just winded, right? Like they don't have the hooks in, they don't entirely have the choke in, but it's just like you know, it's it's a fatigue tap, and that's what that seemed like to me with Nunez. Pena was twenty to one, 
20 to 1, Will, to win via submission. Fourth biggest upset right. in UFC championship history. It is. And that's why, after saying all that success stuff and victory and resilience and adversity, the greatest UFC fighter of all time is John Jones. <laughs> yeah, never never lost. Despite, yeah, sure, he, he went crazy, all, you know, outside the octagon, done some done some some terrible things or whatever it was. But at the end of the day, when, when it's time to line up, he, he gets it done. Yep. He gets it done. Um, yeah, man, that that was absolutely wild. There was a lot of things that went down. Uh, some good boxing matches, good UFC matches. I, I want to talk about like Cody for a second, too. He looked tiny. Cody Garbrandt, he looked, he looked, he looked small. You think so? Because I, I thought he looked massive at 125. Really? Like compared to to Cara France too. Like yeah, you know, that's always that's always the well, thing. Yeah, I, well, com- yeah, compared to Cara, yeah, of course. Right. I th- I thought so, but I just thought he, um, you know, like he wasn't as chiseled as he usually is, which makes sense. But, yeah, and it seemed like that whole fight week he was more worried about Sean O'Malley. And uh, mm-hmm. I always, you know, they, they started drawing at each other at the press conference, too. And there's always been a back and forth between the two guys. And uh, O'Malley was also fighting on the fight card. We gave out GSP and I first round for O'Malley plus 120. Going to pat, pat ourselves on the back there, Will. But the one thing with uh, Cody Garbrandt is when you make such a drastic weight cut like that, even though he's a guy who floats around 145 anyway, like naturally. Yeah, but it's easy to get to 35. To get to 35. Now you're cutting an additional down to 125. It was similar to what happened with TJ Dillashaw. Remember, he cut down to fight Cejudo at 125, and he got stung with a... Cejudo didn't even really connect flush. It was like just grazed the top of his head, and it it just flashed knockdown. And, you know, Cejudo ends up beating TJ Dillashaw. It was the same thing here with... With Kara France, he uh, dropped Cody multiple times, and man, he's lost five yeah. of his last six. And it's Another- so dangerous to cut weight to go to to be smaller and fight smaller because those dudes yeah. are like way faster. Yeah, that's lightning exactly quick, it. faster, and it's so. I mean, you can't even see those punches. So, I mean, kudos to him, man, for for cutting weight to go uh, down there and fight. But man, that was super tough. So, enough of the upsets. We have a really fun segment you know he always nick always comes through with some fun stuff um talk about this segment you have you always show up and surprise me with something it's funny because like i'll get all the you know we'll go over our stuff get the rundown all of a sudden i'll turn on our notes and boom we got something here unexpected so i like i'm a spontaneous guy i like spontaneous stuff so talk to me what we got here so we'll i like surprising you because i like the authentic reactions from you on these (laughs) and and in the wrestling world, I'm a big wrestling fan. We like to say fantasy book, right? Like, what would be a fantasy matchup down the line for a world championship kind of? Let's do this using the NFL and using the Super Bowl. I have a list of five potential matchups that I find compelling. Want to hear your thoughts on this, too. We have about four games left the rest of the way in the regular season. Based off what you've seen, Will, I want you to tell me the potential of this Super Bowl matchup that I'm going to present to you. How's that? Let's do it. All right. First and foremost, I think the one that is the most compelling from a storyline standpoint, Bucks versus Patriots, Brady versus Bill, the script writes itself. Yeah, this would be a, I mean, this is a dream matchup. I think, I think being this is a betting show, the the winner, the loser has to retire. That's what they should do. <laughs> <laughs> like a loser leaves town match in wrestling. Yes, exactly. Loser <laughs> leaves town match. Brady versus Bill in the Super Bowl. The loser must retire. Okay, you cannot come out of retirement. That is that is the wager I would put if I was between those two. I think that is a great matchup. There's, I mean, you you're gonna get endless endless material for this group. I mean, right. You have two weeks to, as a team, you have two weeks to prepare for the Super Bowl. There is going to just be endless narratives. You have countless players, countless storylines. There's so many little things you could talk about. So this would be great. Um, I think this is an outstanding matchup. Um, what are your next ones? Bucks versus the Chiefs, a Super Bowl rematch from last year. So this is, this is my pick. 
for this for the uh, Super Bowl matchup. I just like I, I mentioned before, I originally picked Rams Chiefs. When, as soon as I saw Matt Stafford get signed, and as soon as Cam Akers went down, I went straight to the Bucks. And they just they reloaded. They brought everybody back. They have so much depth. They obviously have the goat. And right now, I feel like it's just looking that way. Them both those teams, they're they're learning how to win. Not learning, but they're winning the tough games. Mm-hmm. They're winning the tough games. <clears throat> Obviously, what the Bucks did, Brady throwing a game winner to like their eighth receiver, which is outstanding. Sean Bunting's back in the secondary. Carlton Davis is back. Sherman is actually healthy. He had a pick yesterday. All these guys are, are getting healthy and, and smarter in, in the back end. The uh, only reason I gave a lot of points because uh, Josh Allen went berserk uh, in that game. Had 300 yards pass, 100 yards rushing, and tried to do everything to win that game. But that's how it looks. And then I look at Kansas City. When they had that little rough patch, it's because Mahomes was being insanely reckless. And the way they lost the Super Bowl is because they were trying to take those deep shots. You know, everyone's like, oh, you know, if they play the Patriots, you know, Bill's going to take away the deep shots. That's fine because they adjusted to what I was hoping they adjusted it to. He is he is taking his time working down the field. He was 20, 24 yesterday, just taking his time working down the field. If you want to take it to deep, deep, deep shots, no problem. We're going to throw it to our guys who are all capable of getting yak. Mm-hmm. That's what's really cool. Like they all can take it 80. Even Kelsey, he can take it 80. He has shown he can. So sure, take away that stuff. We're just going to chunk it, you know, little deep shots. I mean, little deep passes here and there. And then, you know, our running game is is enough what we need. And then probably one of the biggest, you know, pickups or trades was was bringing Melvin Ingram because, like you said, we moved to Chris Jones. And, and right now that pass rush is going off. Yep. And what the analytics don't want to believe is a good pass rush helps you in the secondary. And that is exactly what's happening. And I say that because I guess they got into a huge argument with me on social media like last year about you don't need a good pass rush. You need a good secondary. I'm like, no, you don't. You can text any general manager and they'll tell you straight up, you need a pass rush. As a, as playing as a DB, if the ball is out, I don't have to cover that long. That is common sense. It is simple. And right now that secondary is getting the football. One, they're, I will say too, they are... They made a lot of cool adjustments. Right now, like I said, Sorensen is now, he's more so in the box. And then Honey Badger is able to run over, and Thornhill is doing a great job taking away the deep stuff. So they're playing well as a secondary. So right now, that's my pick. Who else you got? Staying with the Chiefs. What about Chiefs and Packers? I feel like this has been a Super Bowl people have wanted for a while, Will. Well, because this was the first Super Bowl ever. So that's probably why those are. The same, yeah. the same people probably who were at <laughs> Super Bowl one when they were kids. They've been waiting for this matchup forever. Well, I was looking at it more from <laughs> Mahomes, Mahomes versus Rogers. I think the two best quarterbacks uh, from a talent standpoint that I, that I've ever seen personally. So I think it'd be pretty pretty good Super Bowl. What do you what do you think about this one? No, this this will be this will be fireworks. I will love this Super Bowl uh, because you want those head to head matchups. You know, you're more interested in, in seeing those. The two most gifted quarterbacks. Out, well, you know, I can't say the yeah, two of the most because Herbert is doing some ridiculous things right now. Okay. It's, yep. It doesn't even make any sense. That he's, <laughs> he literally is throwing that ball from the 405 all the way to Route 66. It's not even funny. Um, but yeah, this would be super cool to, to watch them too. However, yes, Mahomes definitely wants to go there and, and beat Brady, but he, I mean, beat uh, Rodgers, but he wants that. Brady matchup. What mm-hmm. else you got? Interesting. Well, the aforementioned Justin Herbert. What about a LA versus LA Super Bowl, the SoFi Bowl? Yeah, SoFi is going to be lit anyway because the Super Bowl is here. But those two teams, one, um, both teams would be super excited because they don't have to go anywhere and they can they can uh, practice at their own facilities the whole time and keep things in order. So if that was the case, then it would be a a crazy crazy game um because teams will be able to prepare without having to go anywhere uh, at the same time i think this would be outstanding this would be super fun uh la is is you know a hot city and i think that would be really really exciting but it is not gonna happen chargers <laughs> are not gonna get out of the afc i don't think so 
I hear you. I hear you. All right. The last one that I got here on this list, a uh, little bit of the Cliff Kingsbury Bowl, right? You got right. the Chiefs and the Cardinals. What do you think about this one? Honestly, I don't want to see the Super Bowl. Oh. I, I, I don't want to see Cardinals and Chiefs. I just don't. I don't know. What is it about Arizona? Because you know what? I, I do think I do think a lot of people feel that way about Arizona. Because it's like, I don't ah. know. They're but they're a, they're a good team. I I like I like watching them play. They're a good team, but um first of all, just too much red everywhere. Chiefs and Cardinals, <laughs> that's just like there's just too much red. Like let's let's you know, see who see who is if it was Green Bay and the Chiefs, yeah, you got a green side and a red side, you know, just too much red. I don't know. And it's just I don't really know how I feel about the Cardinals fan base. I don't even know anyone who's a Cardinals fan. I don't know. It's just not exciting. It just I don't know. <laughs> it will be it's gonna be a high scoring game. That is for sure. Mm-hmm. That is gonna be a high scoring game, but I don't know. That's just how I feel. Well, is there any matchup that I didn't mention that you think is uh interesting and compelling? If you had to pick one? Yeah, Pats and Packers. I like Pats and Packers. Mm-hmm. I think that'll be a fun game. Pats and Packers is a good one. I can't um, get the. I, I listen. I know it's the Patriots, and I know it's Belichick, and then, and then Cowboys and Packers. I mean, Cowboys and Patriots would be a good one. Yeah, we saw that regular season that came down to the wire in overtime. But man, I just can't get the idea of a rookie quarterback going all the way to the Super Bowl with Mac Jones, and especially where I, I want to see them get into a shootout. Like I, I want to see if if dude can can win a game that's thirty five, thirty one, kind of. Well, I think the type of team like the Steelers had when Ben won it as a rookie is kind of kind of similar in a sense, you know, just well coached veteran players getting it done. So that's kind of how I see it. I could see it being something like that. But right now that's just what's going on, man. They're they're nine and four. They just snuck up and now they're in first place in the whole conference. Right. So I think that's cool. All right. Interesting. Yeah, super cool. Thanks for see. I like that. I like when you bring these games because this is fun. I do. I am. I am a spontaneous thinker. I give you these organic. I have an answer for pretty much almost anything, so that's good. I'm always like thinking. So that's it for today's show. Next episode, we'll be previewing the Week 15 games, which should be fun and exciting again. So once again, this is Obsessed and Underdogs presented by WinBet. Do not forget to subscribe, throw us a rating and review, and please, please tell your friends. Follow me on all socials at Will Blackman. And where can they find you, Nick? Nick Day is 10 on all social media. All right. Catch you next time. Peace out.